Today's video is full of some amazing thrift store finds that I'm going to upcycle. But the first one that I found, it doesn't need to be upcycled. I love it the way it is. $4.99 for this wood slice covered in epoxy, and I'm going to use it to display on my kitchen table here at the cabin. I had this bunt pan and a broken screwdriver, and I glued the two together with some E6000, and I love the way that it turned out and the primitive look of it. I also found this wreath with some faux greenery. It fit right in that bunt pan perfect, and this is ready to put on my kitchen table. These wooden slices can get really pricey, so I was excited when I found this one, and it was only $4.99. I found this little metal dish. I just loved how ornate it was and it was only $2.99 and it was really durable. Like it was coated in a really strong enamel paint. So I'm not gonna do anything to it, but I'm going to embellish it. I had this lid from a candle that the glass had broken. I'd saved it in my stash and I knew I would be able to use it in one of my projects. I took the plastic ring off fit perfect right into the bottom of that little dish. I'm gonna take the price tag off, clean it up, and then we're going to glue it together with some E6000. If you're in a creative rut and you can't figure out what to do with some of your pieces that you have picked up, I always head to Pinterest because there's so much inspiration there and you might see something that's similar to what you wanna make and you can put your own spin on it. It's almost like these two pieces were made for each other. I put it at my sink and it holds my little scrub brush and because that paint is so durable, I don't have to worry about it rusting. Pillows are so expensive, so when I find a good quality one, I always pick it up, bring it home, throw it all in the washing machine and then add it to my decor. Now this one, the only thing wrong with it was it was missing a tassel. So I just took off those other three tassels. That's gonna be perfect for another project. I'm not gonna throw those out. And what a cozy, comfy pillow that I can add to our living room and snuggle up with in front of our fireplace. Whenever I'm out thrifting, I always look for things that I can turn into candles. So when I found this vintage ceramic stoneware, I knew it would be perfect to add a beeswax candle into it. I had some leftover beeswax from a project I did making some beeswax wraps. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put that link down below in the description. The first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna melt down that beeswax. I like to do this in a tin can and I've just pinched the edge of the tin can a little bit so when we go to pour it out it's going to do it more evenly and not spill. I've done this on low heat, it doesn't look low, I know it's bubbling away there but it is on low heat about three and it took 10 or 15 minutes for it to completely melt down. I had these wooden wicks already, I'm going to place it in the bottom of that stoneware and then add our wick and then pour in our melted beeswax. When you're doing a project like this, make sure you're finding a vessel that's going to be able to handle the heat from burning a candle. I'm slowly pouring in that beeswax and I'm so excited to turn this into a candle. And then after we burn it, we can always just clean it up and use it in our kitchen also. I love making these as gifts for friends and family. After it's set, I'm just going to trim back that wick and how beautiful is this from a vintage ceramic container that we found at the thrift store. This may be my favorite find of the day, handmade pottery coffee mug. I absolutely love the colors and I added that to my cart right away. You might have seen me do a project similar to this. I love picking these up at the thrift store and turning them into cell phone charging stations. This one was only $3.99. It's vintage, probably from the 70s and it's in pretty good shape. So all I need to do with this is just drill two holes in the side of it for the cords to go through. I wanted to upgrade the wicker tray that I had on my coffee table. So when I saw this, I knew it was going to be exactly what I was looking for. I just need to do a little bit of tweaking. It needed some 
feet on the bottom. So whenever I'm at the thrift store, I always head to the toy section and look for wooden blocks. They can be upcycled into so many different projects, but I love to use this size for feet. So I sanded off the graphics on four of those little blocks and we're gonna add them to the bottom of this wicker tray. It's just gonna raise that tray up a little bit and make it look a little bit more high end. I'm gonna use my E6000, but I'm also gonna use my hot glue. Um, the only thing that I would suggest when you're using those two glues together is try not to mix them in together, but I've never had any problems with them not gluing. And it's nice because you can move your project around and it stays put while you're waiting for it to dry. I mixed up some of my white homemade chalk paint. The base of this tray had never had any paint on it, so I'm gonna put a couple coats on that, and then I'm going to flip it over and put a couple coats on the top. The top just had a few scratches in it, and the paint had actually aged and kind of got dingy looking. So by just freshing it up with a little bit of chalk paint, it's going to make it look brand new again. Once everything was completely dry, I sealed it up with some polyacrylic spray, and I love the way that it turns out. Adding those blocks just kind of elevates it a bit and makes it look more high end. Great find at the thrift store, and I was glad that I was able to upcycle it and fit it into my home. Isn't this beautiful? $7.99, but I was not really liking the blue color. So I think I'm gonna spray paint it with a matte black. A little hack when you're spray painting things like this is when you're at the thrift store, look for a Lazy Susan, or this was like a cake decorating tray, and you can put your project on it and spin it around when you're spray painting and you can get more of an even coat. They're really handy to have, and even if you can find them in a couple different sizes, keep them in your craft room and you won't regret having them. I added some moss in the bottom, a ceramic pot that I had, and some faux ivy, and I love this. It fits in with my decor here at the cabin, and much better than that blue color. When I found this handmade tiered tray, I grabbed it right away, $7.99 but it is coated in varnish, very dated looking. I'm gonna use some stripper and see if I can get that varnish off. I'm using the Circa 1850 stripper and I'm just using a chip brush and I'm really applying it all over the bowl. When I started this project, I realized how difficult it was going to be because getting that stripper on the inside of the bowls and removing that varnish was going to be tricky to get any sort of brush or any sort of little, even a toothbrush was hard to get in there, but I kept at it because I had a vision. I wanna give this a beachy look or sun bleached or that driftwood finish. Uh, so I really wanted this to work. So I'm coating on the stripper. I'm gonna leave it for 10 or 15 minutes, let it do its work and see how much varnish I get off on this first coat of stripper. I have it completely covered. I'm gonna put a plastic bag over it just so that stripper doesn't dry out and let it sit. We're 20 minutes into this and I'm going to take a scrub brush and see if I can start to take some of this varnish off. It honestly looks like it might have had four or five coats. It might. It's probably like that lacquer and it's thick and it is working, but it's gonna take a few coats. Gonna do that process again put the plastic bag on it, let it sit, and I've committed to this, we're gonna make this one work. I did three coats and actually I got almost all of it off. There's still a little bit, so I'm going in with my sandpaper. I've got an 80 grit, it's kind of aggressive because I need to get through those last little bits of varnish and it's coming down pretty good. I am not gonna tell you how long I sanded this because it took a long time but it was so worth it. I love the way that it turned out. It's exactly what I envisioned. I'm gonna keep my candle votives in it. I put a little faux greenery. It was a bugger, but I love it. I found this teeny weeny little wooden frame and I picked it up because I wanna make a little sign for my bathroom. 
I'm going to take the glass out and then I'm just going to paint it with some black acrylic paint. It's going to take a couple coats, let it dry completely, and then I'm going to go in with a little bit of sandpaper and distress it. I took one of my graphics and sized it to fit the inside of the frame and printed it off on my laser printer. This graphic's available in my Etsy store, plus all kinds of amazing graphics to craft with. If you're interested, head to my description below and you can check out and see what I have in my Etsy store. And this is what I created. So cute to put by our sink and remind people, wash your hands. This was a simple upcycle. I'm gonna use it exactly what it's intended for a plant stand, but it was dusty, dirty. Some of the paint had chipped off of it. So it just needed a refresh. I'm gonna again, use that cake decorating Lazy Susan, put a piece of cardboard on top so I don't completely destroy the Lazy Susan and just spray. And as you're spraying, you can spin it around and get really good coverage. I put one of my plants on it and such an easy upcycle. Let me know down in the comments what was your favorite project that I did today. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.